Hi, today I'm going to talk about how you can create the full finite element solver in about 100 lines of Python code. And this includes both the pre and the post processor. And uh, the, the idea here is that a lot of people, when they study finite element codes, they don't fully understand really what's going on. There could be a lot of theory that's taught in, in, in a very abstract way. And I think it's better to actually look at code first, because that makes it very uh, concrete what you need to do. So the idea here is not to replace your finite element solver, but to learn a little bit how this works and how you can understand this. And in fact, how easy it is to write something like this and how short it can be in terms of the number of lines of code. So today I will focus on the actual code, run it and, and explain how, how that goes. And then in, later on, I may go through and talk about the actual theory behind the code itself. So in order to make this reasonable, I can't at, try to do everything at once. So I limited the problem to 2D plane strain. And I'm looking at the linear finite element solver. It makes much easier to, to uh, write the code for that, at least to start with. And I'm looking at linear elastic materials and I'm using full integration point elements. Um, but it's very apt, uh, general in the sense that I can use any geometry, uh, boundary conditions in terms of displacement or applied forces on the nodes of the, of the problem that I want to solve. So today I'm going to look at this particular problem. There's no particular reason for this one except that it's an easy one to use and implement. So it's a, a bar of material, as you can see here, that's held completely fixed at the bottom, and I'm pulling on the top. So when I do this, this material will kind of shrink in on the sides as we pull on it. I'm using a linear elastic material, <clears throat> here are the parameters. And the goal is to determine the displacement field of this material, this product, <clears throat> after it's been exposed to 200 newtons of force. So before I go through the code, I'm going to just try to solve this problem in closed form in an approximate way. So uh, I start with the, the equation showing here that is uh, Hooke's law between relationship between strain and stress. And um, in this case, we're playing strain. So we have to uh, use the proper uh, strain components to match that. And we can go through that. And it's a little bit of algebra, but it's not too, too bad. And if you do that, and you assume that the width of the specimen can shrink any way it likes. So that's a simplification that makes it possible to solve it in closed form. I get a top displacement of about 8 millimeters in this case. <clears throat> so that's what I'm going to compare to when I run the code later on. So here is the, here's the one page of code. This is Python code that starts from the top and goes down and then it continues on the right. So this is the complete finite element solver code. And it different sections to it that I'm just going to flip through very quickly here. There are two the function definitions. It's a shape function and the gradient uh, of the shape function here. And then we have uh, a meshing part. This is where we create the finite element mesh. There's some inputs here. How many elements do we want? How many in the x and the y directions? And then how big is this block that we're simulating? And then the rest just assigns elements to that. The next part is the material definition. It's a plane strain, linear elastic, and we get this definition here. And then the next part here is a little bit more complicated set of four loops that sets up the global stiffness matrix of this particular problem. And once we have done that, we can assign nodal forces and boundary conditions to some of the nodes in order to have the boundary conditions that we want in this case. And that's done in these lines here. Now we have one master solve command, basically solve for the displacements for the given conditions that we've specified. And then the last portion here is just plotting the data. This is one way to plot it. And uh, it's pretty easy, right? So it's, it fits in one page. It's pretty astonishing how much you can uh, do with one page of Python code. Here. So if we actually go ahead and try to run this, so I'm going to try to do it live. So here is my uh, code editor. It has the code in it. You can just scroll through here is the code. I'm just going to run it from within the editor by clicking on this uh, button up here. And then here it is. It ran through. I get this window that was created. I'm going to try to make it a little bit bigger. Here is the bar that's being pulled out and it shrinks sideways. And we see the maximum displacement is slightly less than 7 millimeters, which is exactly consistent with what we had in our estimation earlier. So to finalize, 
it's easy to write this kind of Python code. It runs quick and it gives you the results that you expect. The, really the key now is to try to understand what this code does. And that's what we'll do in the next, next set in this series. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.